Let's do this. <laughs> so another year, another great conference. I'm really excited about this. I know some of you came to me at the pub and were asking what, what is this talk about, and let's get into it. So uh, a lot of us are writing modern systems distributed across multiple services, right? And writing these modern distributed systems is quite an interesting challenge for us. So just recently, I had to work on a payment reservation system. And when starting this workflow across these systems, um, we start with sending the user an email with a payment link. And then we have to wait for the user to click the link and fill out this credit card details, pay us. But we also want to send him a reminder email after 24 hours, roughly. And lastly, once he paid, we want to send him a confirmation email with all of his details about his reservation. But with even such a simple workflow like this, there's many, many challenges. So one of these services that are involved in this complex distributed system could go down, or we might experience a network failure. We need to handle retries and timeouts when we talk with the services that send out the emails. And we need to share the state of where our workflow currently is for a particular user, so it outlives new deployments, crashes, or other failure scenarios. And then last but not least, it always happens, we saw that observability talk, we have to debug these situations. And with these distributed systems, it often involves looking into the observability events that have been generated to understand what really happened with these workflows. So I'm really, really excited today to announce the Swift Temporal SDK to help us with these distributed workflows in the Swift ecosystem. So in the remaining parts of this lightning talk, we will give you a quick introduction to Temporal then we talk about how the Swift Temporal SDK works. And last but not least, we're going to build a workflow together. And I'm happy to introduce Shai from Temporal to give us the intro about it. OK. Thanks, friends. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Shai. I'm part of the Temporal Developer Relations team. I am so excited to be here for the announcement of the Swift SDK. Uh, and to give you all a quick overview of Temporal. So Temporal, we are an open source, durable execution platform. We want to make it uh, so you're enabled to, rely, uh, to write very reliable workflows. And let me explain what, what that means. So durable execution is about building code that is incredibly resilient. It's, it's an abstraction that lets you make and deploy your code without being worried about failures. Uh, with Temporal, we want to make it so you don't worry about things like network outages, server crashes, and you can just focus on building the business logic of your application for your users. Uh, we want Temporal to be as developer-friendly an experience as possible. So that means creating everything with code in the language of your choice. Building a process in Temporal starts with creating a workflow. That workflow is resilient and has a ton of built-in survival me uh, methods for things like timeouts, retries, uh, it has a built-in UI for debugging, uh, even when you're out in production. When I'm talking about workflows, I'm talking about processes that have a series of steps. So imagine, for example, I'm buying a pizza. Uh, that process is going to break down into me making a payment. We're going to notify a local vendor. That vendor is going to start producing the pizza. They're going to need to schedule a courier. And they're going to need to send you a notification at every step of that process. Each of those steps in Temporal would be considered an activity. And an activity is essentially an individual step, such as hitting an API, sending an email, or yeah, even paying for my pizza. Workflows and activities are broken up like this for a few reasons. Uh, workflows are deterministic, so we can replay them while maintaining state if needed. And then activities are idempotent, so they can fail and be rerun. If an activity fails, our workflow will automatically retry that activity by default. And then if the application itself crashes, Temporal will automatically recreate its pre-failure state so it can continue right from where it left off. At the core of Temporal are task queues. Clients connect to the Temporal service to start or interact with workflows, which is going to add tasks to the respective queue. Another service might be running a temporal worker connected to that same temporal service, pulling the queue for outstanding work, and then scheduling it. 
We might even have multiple workers pulling the same queue, and Temporal enables it so you can distribute the work across them. Workers themselves might create more tasks when they're executing activities, which will then be added back into the task queue. Temporal allows you to freely distribute which worker is responsible for handling what workflow and activity. In this example, the client starting the workflow and the worker executing the workflow are in different services, but they could also be running on the same service. And the last thing I want to show you is the Temporal UI. It makes it really easy to identify and resolve any issues that might occur inside of your workflows. You can see in this workflow that my reserve inventory activity failed. This was due to a network outage from a third-party vendor. If any individual activity inside your workflow fails, Temporal is automatically going to retry that activity and maintain state for you from the last success. If this wasn't a recoverable failure, I'd be able to come back to the Temporal UI, identify the problem, resolve it, and rerun it. Now, I'm going to hand things back to Franz to talk about how the Temporal Swift SDK works. Thanks, Shai. So on a high level, the Swift Temporal SDK is composed of two parts. We have a worker that handles workflows and activities, and we have a client that interfaces with the Temporal service. Internally, in the Swift SDK, we wrap the Temporal Core SDK and use its C4 and interface bridge with Swift, ins, Swift builds in C interop. The Temporal Core SDK contains all the uh, state machines and logic and it allows the temporal SDKs to focus on just integrating this with the language. It's also used by other languages, like the Ruby or C-sharp SDK. We have configured the SDK to use Swift gRPC to connect with the temporal service. This allows you to reuse your gRPC configuration, including your transports and interceptor. Now, for the last part of today's lightning talk, we'll build our first workflow together by implementing the reservation payment workflow that I talked about earlier. To start us off, uh, I have some code that already implements sending emails to uh, our customer. They all take the same input, but they differ in what content they send in the email. So to group them together, I put them inside a struct. Now, to make them temporal activities, we just have to conform the input to Codable so that the temporal SDK can serialize it. And then we have to add the activity macro to our individual methods and the activity container macro to the surrounding structs. Both of these macros together allow us to register the methods with the worker later on and to call the activity when we are implementing our workflow. So next, let's get going and start to implement our workflow. Workflows only require the implementation of a single run method, and they are marked with the workflow macro. The run method has an input and can be both asynchronous and throwing. In our case, the input is just the email address of the user. And similar here, as with activities, the input should be codable so it can be serialized when sent to the power service. Let's implement the first step of our workflow by sending the user our payment email. To do this, we're going to call our first activity, the payment email activity and we forward the email that we got in our workflow input to the activity. And as part of our workflow, we need to store the state if the user did pay us already. And we'll do this just simply as with Swift code, we have a Boolean and we set it to false. Now, our payments are handled by an external service and they are going to inform us through something like a webhook once the user paid. And to inform a running workflow, Temporal offers a signaling mechanism. The Swift SDK allows you to easily hook up signals for workflows. You can use the workflow signal macro, macro on any function inside your workflow, and the Temporal SDK and the Temporal service will call that once you trigger it from the outside. So once we receive the signal, we are going to flip our did pay boolean to true. And as the last step, we're going to implement the rest of the business logic. We need to wait until the user paid, and we want to set ourselves a 24-hour timer in the case he didn't pay until then to send him a reminder email. The Swift Temporal SDK leverages structured concurrently natively, 
So you can use all the things you know about already, like task group. So let's go ahead and use a task group to create a child task that sleeps for 24 hours and then sends the user a reminder email afterwards. In the body of our task group, we are going to wait until the condition changes to true. And once it changed, we are going to cancel all remaining child tasks. So if the user didn't be pay before the 24 hours, he's going to get the reminder email. But if he paid us earlier, we're going to cancel the child task and we're not going to send the reminder email. And as a last step, we're going to send him the confirmation email, including all of his reservations. So to recap, in just under 50 lines, we were able to implement this payment reservation workflow that survives infrastructure failures, networking problems, and many more crash and uh, durability scenarios that could go wrong in your application. And it does that by leveraging Temporal's durable exploit. And it also integrates really nicely with Swift concurrency, so you feel right at home when you write your code. This was just a lightning talk. So we only showed you a few uh, things that the SDK can do. But the SDK can do many more things, such as queries, updates, child workflows, interceptors. It has built in observability using open telemetry, and there's so much more. Temporal is really a great choice for writing durable and reliable workflows. And with the Swift SDK, you can do it in our ecosystem. So check out the repository, try it out, let us know what you think, and come catch us during the break if you have any questions.